Hello everyone, welcome to the layer 3 curriculum. My name is Arul Richardson and I'm from the Technical Knowledge Management Group and I will be your lead instructor for this onboarding program. So in this video, we will talk about EUI 64. What is it? Let's see. Okay guys, just don't be surprised by seeing all black background. Uh, I've done it uh, just to be a bit different in this video and just to avoid the boring white PPTs and so on. Let's do something different. I will be explaining EOI 64 in this blackboard for you. Now EOI 64 stands for Extended Unit Identifier and this is a computation like an algorithm which is used to compute the interface ID in an IPv6 address. So you know that in an IPv6 address, you have few bits at the beginning out of 128. And at the end, you have 64 bits interface ID. So these 64 bit interface ID can be computed automatically using EOI 64. If you remember while configuring IPv6 lift, we had an option of EOI 64 and whenever we check EOI 64, we have to only give the network bit of the IP address in the router, correct? So the same logic applies over here. If I give the network path, who will compute the host path? So EOI 64 is used to compute the interface ID of the IP address so that you can have a IPv6 address as a whole. Uh, the stateless auto configuration also uses EOI 64 to compute the 64 bits of the host part in a Slack. For example, if I have a router over here and this router has a host connected, both are IPv6 enabled and you have Slack running between them. Now using Slack, this host needs to auto configure itself with a unique IPv6 global unicast address. So the first 64 bit of the IPv6 address is received from the network address of this port, which has Slack enabled. So it got the network portion. What about the host portion? That is the interface portion. So the host can use EUI 64 in order to compute, sorry, EUI 64 in order to compute its next 64 bit and thereby forming a complete 128 bit IPv6 address and now it's ready for IPv6 communication. And this computation is what we will see in this video. So I erase everything. Let's get a blank board and this is going to be EUI64. So the computation is divided into various steps. Step number one is pick up the MAC address of the port. So every port has a MAC address. So just pick up the MAC address of the port. Let's say, for example, we have a MAC address 1234-5678 and A, B, C, D. Okay, so this is a MAC address. Again, this is just an example. You may have any MAC address. So this is one of the MAC address. Okay, now we all know that a MAC address is of 48 bits. If the MAC address would have been of 64 bits, then I, ha I have no problem. I can just take the MAC address and use it for my EUI 64 because my interface ID is of 64 bits. And now I need 16 bits that are missing. So how the EUI 64 does this missing bits and it completes the 64 bit interface ID. So step number one is take the MAC address of the port. Step number two is divide the MAC address into two halves. So let's take another color. I'll take red. I'll be dividing this MAC address into two halves. So this is the first half. And this is the second half. So this is where I will be breaking the MAC address and I'll write it in two halves. So it is one, two, three, four five, six, and seven, eight, A, B, C, D. 
okay so i took the mac address i broke the mac address into two half now i move to step number three which is inserting ffe in between okay so over here i will insert f f f e now these are all hexadecimal characters one hexadecimal character accounts to four bits four hexadecimal character accounts to 16 bits so 16 plus 48 will give me my 64 bit interface id and therefore i stuff these f f f e in between over here so let's write it again by using the FFFE in between. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, F, 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 E, 7, 8, and A, B, C, D. Cool, fair enough. So far, so easy. So I got my 64-bit interface ID, but that's not all. There is one more step which EUI64 defines, and that is invert the seventh bit. Invert the seventh bit, okay? Don't ask me why. This is the standard, this is the design, this is the computation. So in order to find the seventh bit from this 64 bit i have to focus on my first two hexadecimal number because one hexadecimal number will compute four bits so two hexadecimal will give me eight bits correct so in the eight bits i can find my seventh bit so what i will do is i will rewrite my first two digits of this number in binary format so that i can get my seventh bit so one in a binary format can be written as zero 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 one okay and two can be written as zero zero one zero from this this is bit number one bit number two bit number three bit number four bit number five bit number six and this is my bit number seven correct and the rule says invert the seventh bit so this bit this number will remain the same it will be zero 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 one which is nothing but one this will become zero 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 which will give me zero correct now let's write everything together i'll use my white ink again so it's going to be one as it is now it's no longer two it's going to be zero after inverting the seventh bit three four five six f f f e seven eight a b c and d okay which is my 64 bit interface id and if i want to write it as an ip address i can write it in this way one zero three four colon five six f f colon f e seven eight colon a b c and d so colon and over here is my prefix of the network okay 64 bit of my network 64 bit derived from eui 64 together will give you a 128 bit unique ip address and this is how eui 64 computes the interface id now just keep in mind that the seventh bit over here if it is 0, it will become 1. If it is 1, it will become 0. There is nothing that only 1 will become 0 or 0 will become 1. It's always invert the 7th bit, irrespective of whatever is the bit, either 1 or 0. And that's it, EUI64. Now, if you want to enable EUI64 in ECI NPT, this is how you can do it. 
You can open EMS and open the node. This is my element, which is NPD 1800. I can take a port. If you remember in the previous exercise while configuring IPv6 lift, we configured TS port one port, sorry, TS one port number three and IPv6 address. Go to INET6 tab. And over here, you can see EUI64 option. Now this IP is already configured, so you cannot have EUI64 in the existing one. You can delete it and then have a new address with EUI64. So you can add a new IP address. Let's configure 2112, which is in a separate subnet, colon, colon. And now pay attention that I am not entering any host bit in this case because I want to use EUI64. The moment I select EUI64, what EUI64 will do is it will compute the host bit, which is the interface ID for this IP address. So for EUI64, you have to have prefix length as 64 because the next 64 bits will be decided by EUI64. Let's see, I click on apply, I press OK. And now I got the IP address applied successfully and you can see a tick mark over here. Let's do a get and you can see 2111 status is assigned. So it's all fine. How can you look your IPv6 address? Let's go to your IP routing. And here you can see your IPv6 address, which is in TS1, port number 3, lift number 0, and it is exiting this interface. So 21112 is what we configured right now. How can I do it from CLI? Okay, so let's do it from CLI. So I'll just go to the NPT. This is my IP address of my NPT. It's Add the default password. Oops, I think I did a typo. Yes, I am into the, oh sorry. I'm into the NPT. Since it's a configuration, I go to configuration. I'm using the same port. So set interface, XE, TS1, port number three, and also the same unit, which is unit zero. Family will be INET six and address will be 2113 colon colon 1 slash 64 oh sorry now since this is uh, EUI 64 so I have to do it in this way so you give the network part and the host part must be all zeros with EUI 64 as extension do a commit check commit is succeeded and you can commit the changes now let's see the IPv6 interface address and you can see over here that 2113 has its 64 bit interface ID configured automatically using EUI64. How can I say that? Because you see the one which we configured from EMS is also over here and also my link local has its interface ID auto configured. And all of them are same because all of them have used EUI64. And since this is the same port, you have the same MAC address and with different network addresses, the combination is unique and it's a global unicast unique IPv6 address. Now, let me show you what if I try to add host bit and also EUI64 together, what will happen? So this is my command. Now, instead of three, let me do another network which is 4 and I enter the host bit as well. Now when I try to do a commit check, you see it fails, it tells that if you are doing EUI64 then all of your host bit must be zeros. And that's it, that's all that you need to know about EUI64 and I hope it was helpful. Okay, I hope that EUI64 was easy to understand and now you are masters in EUI64 computation and understanding. And I hope that this video was helpful and informative. So see you in the next part of the video where we will discuss more and more on the IP world of ECI. Until then, thank you and thanks for watching.